Good evening, everyone. My name is Linda Dykeman, and I am a librarian in Wilmette School District 39. And I am thrilled to be here with two of my colleagues from the Public Library in order to chat with you a bit this evening about the resources we have available between our two systems to assist students with research projects, finding the, the answers to the questions that they have and doing it in such a way that it's uh, credible, reliable, good resources, solid resources that they'll be able to springboard off of appropriately cite and then use uh, in their own creative efforts. And I'm going to start us off by talking about um, my favorite, absolute favorite reference. Here it is. I absolutely love encyclopedias and I have loved them since I was a kid. I would sit up at night and I'd page through it and I'd read through it, except this is 10 years old. And in today's world, information changes so quickly, it moves so quick that in order to keep up with technology, the best way to go in terms of encyclopedias as a resource is the online version. So let me, I'm going to share my screen and I will give you an overview of um, where we link our products um, in the school system. Oh, and I'll need to have access to some screen sharing from my friends at the public library. Oh, you are spotlighted. So you should be able to show your screen, no? No, it doesn't want to let me share my screen. Host to say, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, this will show us the launching pad for the school district materials. So you get a chance to see where those are housed. We have a District 39 virtual library. And as part of this, we have uh, research resources. And when I click on that, this tab shows us my favorites, of course, the encyclopedias, which really are appropriate for all students. We'll, we'll look a little closer at those. When you scroll down this page, we have some K-4 specific information. Some things are specifically for our middle school friends, and we'll highlight some of these this evening, as well then as the links for the junior high school. Uh, and again, we'll go through that as we go on. But when we're in um, this particular website, we are able to access both World Book Encyclopedia and Encyclopedia Britannica. They're appropriate for grades K to eight. There is a login in terms of the school district. We use the same login and we do have it published on our website. Both of these services are available through your Wilmette Public Library as well and able to be accessed on their website. We will launch here. And when this launches, it's coming up for the perfect page for this audience. There are a number of levels in WorldBook. The, the way the products um, go, there's appropriate content for early learning. So for our youngest learners, kids is our elementary school. Student is appropriate for fifth, sixth grade and up. And then our advanced searching, uh, which is really appropriate for high school and adults. I'm gonna go into the student link just to show you what this looks like. We're able to, of course, do a search here in the center. There are some interesting ways to um, keep track of your research in WorldBook. You can keep um, files as part of my the My Research. You can open up an account for yourself and keep information there. There also are timelines, ways to cite your sources, browsing by subject and maps and atlases, and then current events, biography center, some other media offerings. So throughout this product, there are many more features than just what we would 
put into our search bar. Um, I'm searching on dogs. I, I typically use dogs as um, an example in my research demonstrations. The article upon dogs is very long. It's very, uh, very thorough. And, but we see that there are also a number of other links. So students are able to really start to refine their search that much more. And also we get a chance on the left-hand side to take a look at other resources that have to do with this particular topic. In the World Book product, um, there is an ability to have it read to you. So that is a wonderful support for students, especially if they're working with uh, any language, I was gonna say our English language learner students appreciate that particular feature, as well as it helps with pronunciation of scientific terms, more complicated vocabulary. And of course, you're able to notice here the hyperlinks. And again, when I talk about uh, the pluses of using our online versions, that hyperlink and the idea that I can go to the article on pet or breeders or hunting or collies is a plus, um, as opposed to having to find the next volume in my print world, I can just do that easily online. There also is a fair amount of um, support in terms of various media embedded in these articles. And I am gonna go back to our virtual library to shift to the Britannica product, which again, similar to World Book, allows us to search at different levels. The elementary level is perfect um, for our younger students. Middle corresponds very nicely to the middle grades of five, eight. When you click down on it, you can see the various searches, uh, the various features they have and can search here. So a number of the same features that we saw in the world book option. And one of the things I, I love about this particular um, encyclopedia is that should I access this article and realize that it's either too sophisticated for me, I, I, don't, I don't have the ability to um, understand the context, I can always shift my reading level down to a lower reading level. Or I may look at this and say, well, this is really, this is information I know. I can also move it up to the next reading level. The other thing I like about the layout here is the images and videos are very easy to access from the search. And the video support is especially, um, especially good for students in terms of captivating their interest in a particular, in a particular topic. And so that is some of my favorite resources uh, from the District 39 collection. And I am now going to turn it over to Andrea with the Wilmette Public Library to talk a little bit more about probably my favorite service that they offer and one that you'll wanna check out. Great, thank you, Linda. Yeah, I'm really excited to show you all BrainFuse. Uh, BrainFuse offers uh, free live tutors uh, from 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. every day of the week. And I'm gonna demonstrate here how you access it. Okay, here we go. And if you can all see the Wilmot Public Library homepage, you go to resources and then down to homework help. And on the homework help page, you'll see a long list of resources at the top, brain fuse, what I'm going to show you. Um, but lots of other great resources for grades K to eight, uh, including some encyclopedias you can access here as well. We're gonna show you some of these today. Let's try out a live tutoring session. So all you need for, to access these resources from the public library is your library card. And for BrainPews, what's unusual about this one is you do need to create an account, free account, all right, 
So in BrainFuse, the highlight is this live tutoring over here. Once you click on live tutoring, if it's between 2 and 11 p.m., you can select the grade of your student and your subject. You can choose math or reading. I'm going to put in math and click get live help. And then within seconds, you should be connected to a live person and you chat with them here down on the right. The tutor will be right with you. And I'm going to say my child needs assistance. There we are. Welcome to BrainFuse. How may I help you? with, I'm not going to pretend to be a child, but I might just pretend. He struggles with the nine times table. Let's see what they say. So as you can see, there's a whiteboard available. So uh, you're chatting with your live tutor who are vetted by BrainFuse. Okay, could you place your complete and correct question on the board? Okay. So Andrea, I'm going to just interject mm -hmm. at this moment for our, yeah. um, the view that we have is still your launching off screen. Oh, we aren't able to see yeah. the white. Okay. We aren't able to see the, the whiteboard on the pop up. Okay. Oh, what I'm going to do is stop the share. I'm going to share again and choose the whiteboard. Here we go. How about now? Now we have it. Okay. So let me show you again. On the right is a chat with your live tutor. Um, and now they want me to write this multiplication thing on the. Uh... OK, that means you can add the number nine nine times. OK, um, so just an example, you should memorize them. <laughs> How? Or I'll say, what do you think is the best me mess method for memorizing the times tables? Let's start from nine times one to show you something. Well, okay. So our tutor is going to give us some advice here on the whiteboard. I think they've scrolled it down. See the board, please. Okay. Let's see what they do. Nine times one equals nine. Should I tell the tutor this is a, a, a test? <laughs> ah, okay. Cool. So if your child is struggling, if your older child, they can help with all kinds of topics. Um, they could help with more advanced math if you choose an older grade. I'm sorry, for grades five to eight, I should have chosen an older grade with an older topic, uh, but I chose my son's grade. Okay, um, I'm going to let him know. Got to go. Thank you so much. Because I wanted to show you some of the other features of BrainFuse um, before we go. That helps a lot. So sorry, have to go. We'll be back. How about that? Okay, yes, I got the pattern. Okay. And let's see, how do we get out of here? I'm just going to X this out. Great. Okay, I'm back. So um, that's the sample of the live tutoring. Now I'm going to show you my screen again, and I'm going to show you um, how to look at some of the other features from BrainFuse. You guys see my screen again? Not yet. Not yet? OK. Let's try this again. Okay, I hit share screen. There we go. There we go. Okay, so back to Wilmot Public Library Resources, homework help, K to eight, and then back to BrainFuse. Now we gotta start over. And I'll show you some of the other features in BrainFuse. So writing lab is another great one. You can get feedback on your writing within one business day. If you attach it, they'll have a writing expert take a look at it and get back to you within one business day with some tips. 
Um, the Skill Surfer is more of an encyclopedia. Um, if you want encyclopedia topics, I would I would go with Britannica or World Book that Linda showed you. Um, but they have a lot of articles here and various topics if you wanted to check those out. Um, their strength here is the live tutoring and the feedback on your writing. Um, you can also send any kind of school question, select your grade, select the subject, and um, they will get back to you um, with answers to your question if you don't want to do a live session. The language lab is also very cool. You can connect with a language tutor um, in Spanish, so which is convenient for D39. I'm not going to bother a tutor right now, uh, but you can get a live session to answer questions and coach you on um, your Spanish. I was also really impressed with the vocabulary builder features down here under language lab. And you'll see they have um, all kinds of games, quizzes and flashcards in 11 languages. Um, it's simple, but it's pretty extensive and you can choose a topic and it pronounce it for you repeatedly. Bustic. And then once you think you've got it, you can try flashcards, which are up here to test your knowledge. You can take, give yourself an example, et cetera. And um, I chose fruits, but maybe I should have chosen dogs, Linda. Um, they have numerous topics um, in um, the French, all these different French categories. Um, and they have these for several languages, 11 languages. Okay. Leap. Um, is their test prep site. So they have practice tests for the ACT, the college readiness, GED and SAT. And also under their adult learning uh, tab up top, um, they have um, practice tests for the um, citizenship test. If you go up to, where is it? Adult learners right up here, their um, practice test for the citizenship test. Um, if you go to meet down here at the bottom, you can set up virtual study sessions as long as you have their email. And Parachute was also very cool. And that is up here. E-Parachute is kind of like that book, the famous Parachute career books. You can take a quiz to analyze your interests, are, what your interests are and have them suggest different careers. So that is also a very cool feature of BrainFuse. So please check it out. All it requires is your library card. Just go to Wilmot Public Library, uh, WilmotLibrary.info, homework help, and you can find um, BrainFuse. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to hand it back to Linda. Let me stop my screen share. All right, and Linda is going to talk to us about ebooks. Okay, let me share my screen again. We at District um, 39 have just launched, and again, this is off of our virtual library page. We've just introduced Sora, which is the student reading app. And if you are familiar with the Libby product from the public library, you will see that Sora is uh, the school version of that product and the wonderful thing about the way this is set up is that not only do students um, have the ability to log in with their District 39 credentials, but in that, not only are they getting access to uh, books that have been curated by our District 39 librarians, it connects into the public library um, product as well. So you do get access to both libraries of information. And so this is um, the launching spot for our students when they uh, established their account and logged in. They're seeing a number of different books in different categories. We've got some things um, here for our older readers. Mysteries and thrillers, for example. And the ability to then search for a book allows us to search in both collections for this. Now I'm going to search on Humphrey books. Uh, and while I think a lot of our readers who might be watching this video at some point um, 
would be reading above these levels, it does give us a chance to show you how this works. When I search on Humphrey, I come up with District 39 books on the world according to Humphrey. Obviously it's in the title or a book by Anna Humphrey where it is the, uh, the author's name. But notice as I scroll down, this Digital Library of Illinois, these are the books that belong in the public library collection and we are able to go ahead and borrow those books just based on our District 39 school um, credential. So we are very excited for that partnership and the ability for us to provide uh, extensive online resources. And of course, the public library also has other electronic um, books in other, in other forma formats, as does uh, District 39. But this really is the, the product that for most of our students, they're going to enjoy using for their recreational reading. And then the other thing that I wanted to show you was um, a product for our middle schoolers um, called Noodle Tools. And this, I've got to move some things around here on my screen, so my apologies. Um, if I come back to my virtual library and I go to my research resources, if you scroll down here to the Wilmette Public or the Wilmette Junior High School page, their website has a number of resources for our older students. And I in particular want to go to their research tab and then citation help. Um, one of the things for our, our younger students is we start them off throughout the District 39 uh, library program in terms of starting to learn to cite their sources and being able to give credit where your information is coming from is just the foundational skill um, for research and for any research project. And so once, by the time our students get to the junior high, um, that's a a habit that is just part of how they approach research, but we're able to also be more sophisticated about it and really start working in the upper elementary grades um, to refine that skill set to be what's appropriate for, as they go into high school. And so I want to point out here that there's a, a number of resources on our junior high webpage that has to do with a product called Noodle Tools. And Noodle Tools is um, an all-encompassing research tool. It allows um, students to have a project that they are working on. If we open up the project, you're able to define what the research question is. It has a dashboard that allows for organization of the materials. One of the things um, that I absolutely love about this is the idea that you, there are note cards built right into the product. And so when I click on note card and then I click on new, this allows me to actually take notes. So I might have a book in front of me. I might have another screen open on my computer, but I'm able to really work with the text I have. I can either um, copy and paste it and appropriately work to cite that information, or I can start to actually look at it and translate it into my own words. I can also then record my original reactions to it. What's my thinking about this product? And then you would just save and close that. The beauty of this then is you are able to rearrange and manage your cards in the product so that you're taking your notes on cards able to move them around into the categories you need. You can see over here on the right hand side, it would even develop um, the outline for you. Sources that you have used for this project are then also available. This will also, um, in terms of putting together a new source, I can talk about the type of source it is and then click through a number of um, options to get me exactly 
the fields that I need to appropriately cite those sources. And this, it's a complicated product um, in that it's robust. Um, and there's a significant amount of instruction done on this product in the upper grades uh, of the school system. But know that, that that is part of the instructional program and it is fully integrated with our English language arts uh, and program uh, as you go through the District 39 schools. Okay, I'm gonna stop my share. And I'm going to turn it over to Alice um, from the Wilmette Public Library for some other special services that are offered. Thank you, Linda. Um, I'd like to share my screen with you. Okay. When you uh, go to our homepage, you'll see the resources here and zip on down to Homework Help. And I wanted to share with you something called Culture Grams. Any information you would want on any country in the world, you will find here in Culturegrams. First, you need to put in your library card number. Here's the world, <laughs> flat, but um, you can choose any country. And I have chosen to demonstrate um, France to you because um, it is one which has uh, I'm going to go to Europe, and then I'm going to, well, actually, I don't even have to do that. I can just put in France and show you what we have on France. Students can find the flag, information about the language, information about food, recipes even. Here's some little facts. Um, about the country you may or may not know. And then uh, you can look up specific, uh, on the left side, you can look up information on the climate. You can look up population statistics. Language, of course, is French. Um, all the students do study other languages in the schools, and it does talk about that. There's history. There is lifestyle. Um, information about the government and the money and how they get around. One thing I noticed, which I really uh, appreciated, was when you choose an article, uh, let's say something about the holidays. You will see, when it opens, you will see information about what holidays they celebrate in France. Oops, gotta go back to France. For some reason, it doesn't like to stay on the. And you can listen. Um, you find an article. This one is a recipe. You find an article and it will read it to you, which is nice when you're, in this case, if you're. Um, making the recipe and you don't want to keep looking at your screen they will even tell you um, you can listen to the recipe they'll tell you what you need and you can put it together articles can be read to you you can print them you can send them to yourself you can uh, translate into another language lots of choices there um, you can find out here. I'm sorry. Um, in look, I uh, found a part on, uh, let's see, population. You've got statistics here. There's photos, there's videos, there's a slideshow about uh, different scenes in the country and um, different cities. Anywhere in the world. You don't even have to leave home, which we can't now anyway, but you can just tour the world this way and find out everything you need to know about a, a different country. Um, there are words in French. You can uh, try your hand at saying them. Various phrases, numbers. While you may be familiar with Spanish from school, try French, why not? Uh, you can find out 
Uh, let's see, on the timeline about French history and lifestyles, about the games they play in uh, France. Of course, soccer being number one, football as they uh, prefer. Um, soccer is popular all over the world. And here you can learn all about how they play in France, how the Tour de France bicycle race, one of the most popular events there. And, you, and of course, we follow it as well. Um, I thought this was interesting in about their schools. They go to school six days a week. Wednesdays, they get out early. They have time for sports. Who knew? And they do go for half a day on Saturdays. So um, we can't complain about our five days of school when they have six. So culture grams will tell you everything you need to know about a country. It will tell you famous people. Um, there are interviews with natives. It just is a wonderful source for information. And again, because it's digital, it is updated very often for your statistics. And um, it's the most current information you can find. And I'm sorry for the slowness here. Um, if you want to see photos, We have um, famous people and again, it's just really, really slow for some unknown reason. Here's a photo gallery that you can put in and um, find pictures of citizens from the country you're looking up. In this case, it was France. Um, it has the um, database is updated often, so we can get, as I say, current information whenever we need it. Um, I think it's extremely useful. Rather than just browsing encyclopedias and other books, which may or may not be current, the database is available to you. Anytime, 24-7, you need. One thing, and I think uh, I know Linda mentioned it as well, when you have an article from the database, the citation is there for you. So you won't have any trouble uh, putting the information down for your school report. So this is culture grams. Well, we have Africa there, but again, you can see the photos, you can see slides, videos, and interviews with uh, various people in the country. So this is culture grams. And again, you get to it from our website and um, you can certainly uh, use it anytime. Thank you so much, Alice. Um, did you, did you go want back me to? to do you want me to show Novelis um, thank you. because you're breaking up a little bit? Yes, I think Novelis is one of the most useful uh, databases we have. Okay, I'm going to show them Novelist. Okay, it's taken over here. This is another one that you can access uh, for free with your library card. Um, Linda, do you have Novelis at um, uh, and your, your D39 library portal as well? No, we do not. Okay, okay, so let's show this off here. I just used Novelist the other day. Um, if you've got a big reader at home, um, you're going to really um, benefit from this. Or if you're just looking for a read alike. So, what Novelist is, is a giant database of books, and what you're looking for for kids is Novelist K to 8. And that we use this all the time at the public library when um, kids are looking for something similar to their favorite book. Um, looking for a new book to read, a new series. Um, it also helps um, kids learn different subject appeal terms so they can learn how to describe the kind of books they like and it helps them um, explain to the librarian, you know, what kind of books they like. You know, I like a book with action and complex characters or I like, you know, something romantic and sad, um, as you can see. So um, for the teens, um, it's already a tab here with a lot of great recommendations. 
Um, yesterday, I had um, a child who loved the I Survive series and they were reading, um, they love the I Survive the Tsunami book. And the parent asked me, do you have other fiction books about tsunamis for my child? And I just drew a blank. So we went to a novelist and we found some tsunami fiction. Um, you can just put in keywords like that. There are more advanced ways to search. Um, actually, I'm gonna do a keyword search for tsunami. And then what you can do is narrow down your search by fiction or nonfiction. So this refine results tool on the left is really useful. I can limit to teen and I can choose fiction, update my results. And then I'm gonna go from a list of 340 books to a list of 23 books for teens fiction about tsunamis. Another cool feature about this is you can go directly to the public library catalog if you're interested in one of these. Let's say this one looks really good. I see this reading level is what I'm going for. You can look, cl click to the Goodreads reviews as well, but I, I know I wanna check this one out. So I'm gonna check the library catalog and just click this where this pink book is at the bottom. Takes you right to the Wilmette Public Library catalog. Looks it up for you. Okay. So it doesn't look like we own this particular one, um, but um, it's, it's very cool. Um, very useful. Yeah, it's so useful. We use it as librarians all the time. And I think not enough parents and kids know about it to try to um, find read alikes for their kids. Now, what's a popular series in grades five to eight? Um, how about this? you read all the Lightning Thief books, let's say, okay? And um, all the Rick, you have a big Rick Warden fan at home and you want some read-alikes is what we call them in the library world. Um, okay, no results for the lightning thief. Really, seriously. I'm sorry, I didn't uh, prepare. I'm, I'm doing this on the fly here. All right, what's another really popular five to eight book? The Hunter series. Oh yeah. The Warrior, Aaron Hunter's Warriors. Warriors by Aaron Hunter, yes. Okay, all right. And there are many in that series. So let's say you've got a middle schooler that's read all the Warriors books. You can do a search for it. And what the heck? All right, we're gonna have to trim this out of the video. <laughs> um, you can, I'm looking for read-alike books. Um, all right, let me just demonstrate here what I was looking for showing you. Let's, um, let's browse some genres here and then I'll find something real popular for you. Okay. Let's see. Wow. So you can see they've broken them down into really specific genres here. All science right. fiction is popular. Science fiction is very popular. Let's say you've got a big fan of the hatch at home. Okay. And um, for a lot of these, you're gonna have recommendations on the right side that pop up immediately. These are gonna be read-alikes for that book that have similar style and tone um, and age level. You can also see the reviews of the book. And if you go to lists and articles, I think you find some other um, book lists, let's see. Okay, so you can browse by other genres in this case. Um, and if you say, oh, I really like apocalyptic fiction, you can click up that search term here. And oh, I like it when it's really bleak. And oh, alien invasions, those are, that's my cup of tea. You can do a search down here as well. So that's just a really quick introduction um, to novelists and how you can use it to find more books for your, your young readers at home. Okay, it looks like we don't have any questions. Uh, so we're going to wrap it up. Um, Linda and Alice, it was great uh, looking at these resources with you. And uh, we're going to put this on our website so that we can share it out with more families. And uh, thank you everyone for joining us today.